Welcome back to Great Day. All right, so we train kids for sports, we educate them to get jobs, but what about teaching them to create jobs? After posting a really low GPA during his first year of college and called a failure, our next guest finally figured out he was truly an entrepreneur. And retired pro football player Karan Williams is a successful one. Please welcome him to Great Day Houston as we go beyond the jersey. Hello there. Hi, Deborah. How are you doing? Good. Okay, so we're going to start with the fact that you were raised in a single parent home, which right. so many times people take that and run off with it and think that there's no way someone could succeed. Right. Um, your mama was somebody who was a mama and a daddy and then some. Oh, uh, and, and a can of worms. She, yeah, right, right. Yeah, she, uh, she was very uh, strict, but she had to be. Uh, coming uh, from a, a single parent household, uh, my mom being from Jamaica, um, having me when she was fairly young, she had to uh, be at the top of her game very early and therefore instilling us and my two younger brothers the importance of uh, education and, and having stability in your life. Yeah, your mom's a doctor? Yes, she is. Okay. Dr. Thomas, yes. Yeah, do yeah Dr. Thomas. Yeah. Get, yeah, I bet you call her, instead of mama, you call her Dr. Thomas, yeah, don't yeah. you? When I'm yeah, trying to, when I'm trying to get a check, I call her yeah, Dr. Right, Thomas. Yeah, right, right. Okay, you are one of those people who just, uh, sometimes we don't realize the gift we have when it comes to us easily. Right. So you played football how many years as a child growing up? I played one year in high school. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And it's, it's ironic, um, like I said, she was strict, so I never went partying or anything like that. I, I was always school, home, and church, and that was a rotation. Uh, I noticed that my friends from middle school to high school, they were all venturing out to playing football and getting you know, accolades and getting notoriety. And I was like, I want some of that too. Yeah. You know, so I, I decided, uh, my aunt and I, we convinced her to let me go out and play. You and, convinced uh, Dr. Thomas. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and um, she said, okay. And um, I went out and I just, emulated what I saw my friends doing. I did it at a very high level. and I Your was senior year. My senior year, and I was very athletic, and I did enough to lead a team in, 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 uh, in sacks as a, as a linebacker, as a defensive lineman. And it's crazy, because oftentimes, oftentimes they'll say, if you didn't start at an earlier age, you're yeah. probably just not going to be good at that. Yeah, you most gotta, guys start at six, yeah. six years old. All right, you got a scholarship to yeah. college. I got a scholarship. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Y'all stop clapping. Stop <laughs> clapping. Okay, so you decided you were going to be in the NFL, no ifs, ands, and buts, and what's all this other academic stuff for? Yeah. And you got a GPA your first year of? A 0 0.75. <laughs> oh. How, how, okay, we were talking about this in the office yesterday. We go, how, you have to really work at that. <laughs> so yeah. did, did, you, did you just not show up or just not turn stuff in? Or I how mean, did that happen? The hard work in that is at a premium, uh, obviously. Uh, I, what I did was just uh, realize that I had freedom, realize that I, I wasn't obligated to go. I didn't have my mom there to instill yeah. me to go. And I just slept and go to practice, slept, eat, go to practice. So the point seventy five was for the football. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was, so we got a point uh, seventy five for PE. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> until I until I realized that um, academic probation was around the corner. And the scholarship goes away. And the scholarship away, goes, goes away, go away, and everything goes away, and that was a lot to deal with because I went to college when I was seventeen, mm -hmm. and that was a lot to deal with not having a firm understanding of what's to come. Yeah. So you got your stuff together. I got it together quickly. quickly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because Dr. Thomas said. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she's the law. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I ended up staying uh, in Amherst, Massachusetts for every summer, every winter going forward because that's the only way to get a GPA. Your GPA is like your credit score. Yeah. If, you, if you go down on it, it takes forever and a day to get back up. And I realized that from earlier on. So I was just focused on not getting kicked off the team, but accomplishing my dream. Yeah, so it's never like really what happens is how you handle it's it, It's how you right? handle a situation, yes. All right, so you got to play ball. Yes, yes. Uh, after all, but then you realized there was something else there. And I, I, was, I spoke to some, uh, some pro ball players the other day about what, what life is after pro ball. Right. And some of them were, had a good idea of what they wanted to do. Others mm -hmm. are like, I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you became this thing that we don't really teach an entrepreneur. Right, right. Uh, funny story how I got into that. When I was in um, high school, I started uh, messing with clippers. Uh, funny story, um, I don't have any hair now, so don't judge <laughs> me for that. But um, somebody at church got me a pair of clippers for a love gift, uh, one, one church uh, at a setting. And my aunt, she was getting married the next, the next Sunday, and she was like, I want you to be there. Um, and my mom, I was like, Mom, I need money for a haircut. Back then, it was $10 for a haircut. Uh -huh. And she looked at me, she was like, didn't somebody give you a pair of clippers? Yeah, there you go, um, Mama. Clip? So I ended up butchering my hair <laughs> and um, butchering my brother's hair. And it wasn't until I got to college and, and playing professionally that I started to cut hair. And I was As a real barber. As a real barber. And I was very, you know, I graduated with my, with my uh, bachelor's in fine arts and minor in computer science. 
Thank you. And um, when I was cutting hair in the locker room, guys saw my attention to detail. I was very focused in making sure that the lineup was crispy and the fade was blended. And they were like, do you, uh, do you draw? Do you? And I started to tell them more about my background. And that's when, do you, do, do you build websites? Do you build logos? Do you design clothing? And all that stuff just came yes, flooding yes in. And, yes. and they had the capital to, 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 you know, to cover what was needed. Right. And I just dabbled into it. And the thought hit me. I'm like, I can't play forever. You know, what's going to be the next step after this besides, you know, being a coach or a fitness trainer, which most retired football right, players right. are doing. I was like, I want to do something different. So, so tell us what that something different is. You, you mentioned design right. and the whole bit and computer websites right. and stuff. What you do today is? So what I do today, I'm a creative branding designer. So what I do, I work in the tech industry where we build websites, application, branding, uh, whether it's your logo for individuals or corporate. And it's a very, it's a very exciting uh, 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 sector to be in for me because for me it's like I can wake up and just design without thinking. But there's a strategy behind it in terms of when you're appealing to a user or a consumer. And that's when playing football comes into, uh, uh, into aspect because every team I've played on, I've, I've always been a, cap a captain. So I had to learn how to manage people's emotions, their temperaments, their yeah. egos. Football is a lot of ego-driven yeah. uh, sports. And so sometimes even though you own it, sometimes you're on the bench. Exactly. And you let exactly. the team play, right? You go on. And I had that happen to me before. So I had to learn how, how to be humble and approach people with the respect that they need and that they require in order to convey them to do what I want them to do uh, in, 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 in large scope. So that was something that was helpful then, and now it's transitioning into this sector where I'm able to hear uh, somebody's woes and what they want and understand their target market and being able to create something that will appeal to yeah. that market to get a lot of attraction. And what's so cool about this is, is it's not one of those things where you say, when I grow up, I want to be, because they don't know to say that. Right. But you are an example of letting things unfold and right. tapping into who you really are and right. not being afraid to step out there and make it happen. You got to be fearless. Yes, right. yes. Okay, we got to get you back to give us some business principles. So thank you so much thank for being you for on. Having me. Thank and you say me. hello to Dr. Thomas, and I'm going to tell my son he can't play football to a senior year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to keep up with Karan Williams and for more information on his design company we have a link on greatdayhouston.com.